Hello and welcome to the program. I am Deji Badimasi. Now, one long-standing criticism against the Nigeria's anti-graft agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has always been its failure or inability, if you like, to secure high-profile convictions in court. But this past few weeks has actually disproved that. In the past two weeks, the EFCC has secured two high-profile convictions, but and it's a very big bet now, the convictions came at a very high price. It took over a decade to secure them. The first big conviction was secured on May 30, 2018, when a federal high court in Abuja sentenced the former governor of Taraba State, Reverend Jolly Nyame, to 14 years in prison. Nyame was found guilty on a 27-count charge bordering on criminal misappropriation, diversion of public funds, and breach of public trust. The EFCC had initially slammed a 41-count charge on him. Now, the judge, Justice Adebukola Banjoko, sentenced him to 28 years in prison, which amounts to 14 years for criminal, for criminal breach of trust, two years for criminal misappropriation, seven years for gratification, and five years for obtaining by dishonesty. The sentences will, however, run concurrently, and that's why everything has come up to 14 years. Now, the same judge on June the 12th also sentenced the former governor of Plateau State, Joshua Darie, to 14 years in prison. By the way, Joshua Darie is a seventh senator. Darie was found guilty on 15 of the 23-count charge brought against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. He was first arraigned in 2007 on a 23-count charge bordering on money laundering to the tune of 1.6 billion naira. The former governor, of course, was given 14 years for, the criminal, for criminal breach of trust and uh, two years for misappropriation of public funds. The sentences, of course, will also run concurrently. Now, the verdicts have drawn commendations from various civil society groups, and the EFCC has used it to dismiss suggestions that it is selective in the anti-corruption war and targets only the opposition. Both former governors are members of the ruling APC. They were, of course, in the PDP before defecting to uh, the APC. Joining me now to discuss the impact of the court judgment is Libra Sushuma, who is a lawyer and a political analyst. I also have uh, Ivan Sufeli, who is a, a lawyer as well. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the program. Let me start with you, Ivan. Um, would we say that this is the beginning of, you know, what would be the norm to come? Well, um, the judiciary, as we know it to be in Nigeria, have always um, um, made these kind of shots, okay, by taking on high-profile cases and... Uh, but never giving high... It. We've never had high-profile yeah, convictions. Yeah, the, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere with this. You know, uh, we've had cases where high-profile cases, we've had conviction as well, but it is not very frequent. And that is because the uh, individuals or past governors and the DGs of institutions are so powerful that they are more, even powerful than the institutions. But now we have one or two judges here and there who have taken it the other way around. And this is the kind of confidence we require in the judiciary to redefine the scope. Because a governor, for example, is a trustee. And we've not seen that play out. A trustee is someone who holds something in trust for the people. Okay, if you look at the land use, as I said, the governor holds land in trust for the people. And that is why in this particular case, you have a conviction on breach of trust. You understand, and diversion and all that. But back to the judiciary. The judiciary is my core here because we have come of age. We have gotten to that level where we should even try past president and convict them. Just like we have in South Africa, case going on in South, South Africa, Africa and other, you know, countries. Latin American countries. Yeah, so. Latin America, even Zimbabwe. We have, you know, all this kind of Former things. president of Brazil. Yes, you know, so we should get to that level because we are still at the level where we come up with the excuses that past governors should not, past presidents should not be investigated, you know, we do, and all that. And we, we, we must grow up to that level where we begin to hit it hard so that the people will benefit from this kind of activities. When the judiciary is not strong enough, we are going to have problems. So this kind of judge should be encouraged, okay? We should have more of judges like this, who will take on, because there are judges who will sit on this particular case I'm, I just, we just, we're talking about, and will not come to this conclusion. They will not give this kind of verdict. You understand? But now we, are, we, 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 have, we have someone who, are, who is doing that. We should encourage them. We know there's a particular judge also, Justice Kola who is like this woman. 
we know what happened to him when he did, when he convicted well, well, past uh, MPA uh, uh, DG. We know what happened to him thereafter. So the society and the institutions should also protect judges who will do their work without fair and favor. Okay, I'm, I'm going to come to you, Libros. 10, 11 years, that's how long it took to, to, to get to this stage, to get this conviction. It's a long time. Don't you think that's too much a high price to pay? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Um, you, you know, here we are always very quick to say that um, the windmill of justice grinds slowly. True, 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 but true. We forget also that justice delayed is justice denied. denied. And, and so um, a, a lot of um, people would have forgotten. And then sometimes, you know, even the, the complainants, you know, memories would have failed them. And then, you know, some persons who are waiting for justice to be served, in some cases, would have died waiting for justice. justice. Remember the Bola Igues case? The, the, the wife died, mm -hmm. you, you know, and yet the family still didn't get justice. And, and so it's a very high price to pay. And so that's why, for me, um, we need to look at investigations also. Prosecution starts from investigation. You need to, in investigation, because you have to prove beyond reasonable doubt, and if there's any doubt created in the mind of the court, you know, it will be resolved in favor of the accused. And so we need to encourage you know, watertight investigation. And then also, we need to find, you know, that nexus where, like Evans has said, you protect the, the persons who are dispensing, dispensing justice. Because if, you know, they are to dispense justice without fear of, of favor, they also need to be protected. Protection. They also need to be sure that, you know, somebody is watching their back and that if they take the steps that they're about to take, looking at, you know, the entire gamut of the case, then the society and the institutions of government will also find a way of rewarding them for diligence and hard work. But the situation where you dispense justice without fear of favor, and at the end of the day, that might even be the last case you ever, you, you know, um, a high-profile case you ever handled, you know, becomes a problem. Like this case of Joshua Dari, I was saying it before the program, I have been privileged to get snippets of the investigations in that matter. It didn't start today. Even as a sitting governor, you know, immediately left office, the DSS had at some point conducted, you know, watertight investigation in that matter also, right from, starting from um, his dealings in London, money laundry and the rest. You remember also this was the same man who escaped, you know, yeah. from London, came London, back to yeah. Nigeria and all of that. So one would have expected that with all of those investments, but the human factor, and the interference also from, you know, the higher mighty did not allow that process see the light of the day. And that's why I also I'm happy with the amendment to the Constitution that the President has just signed into law. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, granting judiciary financial autonomy. autonomy. And so with that financial autonomy would come some form of independence for some of these, you know, judges who, who will not have to go cap in hand begging the executive, you know, for... Especially for, for, at the state people. level. Especially mm. at the state level, even at the federal level also. We're seeing this happen at the federal level now. It's need for us to also see, you know, a lot of this happen at the state level. But then, the caveat, we saw this happen with um, um, uh, body judge, but eventually at the Supreme Court, what happened? You know, so that's why for me, the as, as much as we are celebrating, oh, because this, we know it's not the end of yes, the legal it's not, process. It, it's, that's why ten years. If it takes you ten years to deal with the matter at the court of first instance, you you will you and we know the delay at the court of appeal and even at the Supreme Court. You know, there are cases that have been in Supreme Court for the past fifteen years, and they are still there. there you, there's you, something you know, very quickly <coughs> now. Something I want to actually get straight. Yeah. As we speak today, are these men in prison? Are yes, they, yes, yes. That's what the but then, are. But then, I don't know if they file them um, bail application pending appeal. appeal. You know, because you are allowed to, the court has a discretion to grant bail pending appeal. Mm. And so if they have and, filed and application... Court, that, it will be the same court that passed the verdict, right? Yes, yes. And if it is refused, they can go to a higher court. Uh, and for, there, there's no information now that they have there's, appealed there, anyway. There's, there's none that um, if they have appealed and then, you know, file your notice of appeal and then you file a bail application, just like so, so, asking for a stay of execution of the judgment pending appeal. So in this case, it is bail pending appeal. Mm -hmm. And so if the court, in its discretion, 
grants bail pending appeal, then they, they will still... So, know, so, but but the, the normal procedures, let's take the case of Darie, for instance, and, and you know, we, we saw him that day leaving the court and he was escorted into a pickup, of course, not the, yeah. the, the, the vehicle he came he came yes, to court yes. with. So usually after um, a verdict is passed, Definitely. the moment you're leaving the court is straight to the prison. Yeah, right? once you are convicted, you are convicted. The moment so you're not allowed from, to go home? No, no, no. From that point, the moment you are convicted, from that point, you're straight to prison. And in the same vein, the moment you're discharged and acquitted, from that point, you become a free man. You don't, all you need to go do, and I just sign the necessary so, papers so, and formalities. So basically, these men are now in prison. Whatever appeal they're going to lodge will be from prison. If, if yes. they're going to ask for bail, it will be from prison. Yes. yes. And now they are convicts. Yes. Well, we just have to wait and see well, what, um, if they're going to come up with any appeal. But let us look at the, the both cases now. Uh, who, who would you blame? It is talked about investigation, no doubt. There's mm. a problem with that. But other than investigation, the bigger blame some people have said lies with the judiciary. I'm, I'm, yeah. When I say, say the judiciary, even lawyers especially, because we've seen some of, I mean, some matters over this case have actually gone to the Supreme Court and back. Yeah. Yeah. So, so who would you blame for all of these delays? Because it, it just makes no sense at all that cases of this nature would take 10, 11 years. Well, I will blame so it on this. lawyers would definitely be using some tactics to, to, to help their clients. Yeah, I will blame it on the system. A lawyer's responsibility. That's the problem really. now. Nobody no, no. wants to take responsibility. No, no, no. What, 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 blame what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is you're a lawyer. No, no, I can't. I would, allow me. I will blame it on the system. And I also blame it on lawyers, defense attorneys who want to delay proceeding. And sometimes, prosecution also could be compromised and thereby delay the system. Let us not just believe that EFCC is just one superman. They too, at some point, may not do what is required of them as at when they are supposed to do it. And you have to, you, the next is to have an adjournment. But while this case was ongoing, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act was passed. And one of the provisions is to hasten uh, criminal, criminal trials. Trial. Okay? Now you cannot take preliminary objections. On appeal. Okay? You have to pack everything up during judgment. Because before now, you will bring preliminary objection. Uh, before you know it, before you, that's, before you even the begin to hear the case, to the Supreme Court and back, it go to the, the Supreme substantive Court matter and come is back. In, then in, before in you now go back to the substantive matter, you, in some cases you and don't even go back. Yes, you go to another application. Yes, you bring another application, and now you have uh, uh, interlocutor. And, and we saw that a lot appeals. in both cases. Yes. Yeah, even in uh, Mustafa's case, it's twenty-three years. You have the issues or all that. But now the, 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 the law also, the judiciary in its wisdom uh, also, the legislature, have also come up with a law. That is, I'm sure, not just that, to make sure that you don't have all those delays any longer. And now there are mechanisms also where a lawyer is delaying a case unnecessarily, cause a slam on the parties who are involved by the discretion of the court. And sometimes the court also look at <coughs> the menu of parties. You understand? So the, the, the delay is stemming out from a lot of factors, not just the lawyers alone. The lawyers have their own way of making things difficult for the court to handle, okay? Then the system also have its own problem. And that is why I was saying expand the judicial system. Let's have more judges. Yeah. There's also congestion in the courts. Yes. You understand? A judge will sit over 25, 30, 40 matters in a day. And in that 30, 40 is this high-profile case involved, and it's listed for the day. That is not just the only case. So if I have like 25 cases, and then one party is not very ready in a high-profile case, what do you expect me to do is to adjourn so that I can hear other matters? So with the factors are the population is heavy. Okay, the judiciary is, is, is lean, the, the, the workforce is lean, it's not as, as big as it should be, unlike the legislature and the executive where you have, because the judiciary, you don't have representative from all structures of the country, as you have in legislature, you have a very wide house, you have committees, many committees that sit, sit quasi-judicial function, to submit a report to the to plenary, and then you hear matters expeditiously, but in the judiciary, you just have few people there and then these people are overworked okay that is not an excuse anyway but that contributes to the factors that is to make you i mean for 10 years you are you are your matter is on oh. and uh, for for 12 and this is not the end of it this is just because, the beginning because they are still going to go on appeal to exhaust their options wait, 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 just, just hold on now i want us to take a short break i mean we, we and when we come back i want us to look at the options available to um these um 
Well, this this former governors now, and um, you know, possibly look at how long this case is still going to drag on for. We'll take a short break, and uh, we'll be right back. On Digi 360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, family. DG 360, providing clarity to issues. All right, welcome back. And I still have uh, Libro Sushoma and Evans here in the house. And of course, we're looking at um, those landmark cases now involving the former governors of Taraba State and uh, Plateau State, Joshua Darie and Reverend Jolly Nyame. Um, Libros, this is certainly not the end of uh, this matter. Both men may, may, because they've actually not said so, but there's every likelihood that... Um, they, they want to appeal. So then there's nobody that won't appeal a matter like this. <laughs> there's nobody that won't appeal it. So so and um, so they would appeal, and they may also be seeking uh, for for bail as well, right? Yes, definitely. Uh, you, you see, before I go into that, let me quickly, you know, bite a little bit on the question you threw at um, my colleague here. Um, you find out that, like Lord Denny said, when a judge sits on trial, the judge is on trial. But here, what happens? We are. We are always very quick to forget. I, I bet you some people might have even forgotten that um, Joshua Darius' matter was still in court. Honestly, even, but you, you a, know, a lot of people, the judge, and even John case, exactly, a lot of people And, and then also, you, f you find out that how are some of these judges appointed? How are they appointed? Do we, you know, honestly, you know, appoint people who are competent to handle or people who just want to go to the bench? You know, so if you garbage in, you get garbage out. And so that's why also these are some of the causes also. Um, and, and then you find out that there's what you call case management. If you have a serious judge, he would be on top of his case. And so you don't come seek unnecessary adjournment, you know, in court. Because we've seen in this, some of these high profile cases, we've seen situations where they would throw all kinds of spanners in the works to ensure that the matter does not go on. And thank God for the Administration of Criminal Justice Act that now tries to limit all the frivolous applications. And look, any preliminary application can no longer go on appeal. Take all of them together, and at the final determination of the matter, then you can raise all of these issues on appeal. And that's also what's leading to the quick dispensation of justice in these matters. You know, otherwise, some of the preliminary issues, the lawyers will bring an application to challenge even the competence of a lawyer appearing, you know, prosecuting the matter. And then the judge rules in one way or the other. You take that matter on appeal. On appeal. Mm. And then you ask for stay mm. of proceedings pending appeal. That you want to go challenge that singular decision that has no nexus, that no bearing with the, with the case. We, we saw you, that in you, um, you know, the Senate president's case. Exactly. And so you go on appeal up to the Supreme Court and you know the time it takes to take matters to that level, and then you come back. And also because the NBA does not discipline some of these lawyers. Behind every allegation of bribery, senior, senior lawyers, yeah, behind senior. every allegation of bribery against a judge, there's a senior advocate who's a conveyor belt. So what happens? You know, so these are some of the issues also. Bedeviling this, you know, the administration of criminal justice system. The case also, what the this the court had done here is to find that nexus, that connection. Yes, there's money laundry, and so it is not a, a situation of oh yes, because he's the governor, the box stop at his table. There is actually a, a relationship between the man who laundered the money and the governor. And then also, I have one big problem here. How come it is only the governor? Where is the accountant general of the state? And where is the 
a financial control they, they, of the they, state. They were not, not charged anyway. So all of these people also, maybe EFCC decided to use them, them as, as witness. Exactly. You know, you plea bargain. So if you, witness. Yes, because if you without can, the cooperation of, of these, these guys, people, it, it will be difficult to, to, to nail it. And for Joshua Dari, I'm looking at a, a situation where uh, they may bring reason to say, since he's a serving senator, uh, to make the people have representation and the lawyers will put all that together. All that bail. Yeah. Oh, you, you, uh, you yeah, for bail. For bail. Yeah, for no, bail. no, no, because for, if you put him... Bail, they can bring anything. If you put him in prison, he's... He, no, he, he, I, I, he's are you saying that there's a possibility yeah, that that's what I'm the lawyers could bring this up? Yes, yes they will bring anything. Yes, you'll bring everything you can. You know that all it's tenable. Around. And uh, bring it up so that the judge will look at it and be persuaded that uh, don't deny these people representation. There is a senator and all that, and that might also, you know, another persuade. Thing, an another thing is that to even have even if and all that. It, so another it's, thing it's is a possibility. if the people sent him to represent them, but the people didn't send him to commit crime. Yes. And so, if in the process of representing, mm. he, which one comes first? If he's in the process of representing and he commits crime, mm. do you close your eyes to those crimes? Well, at, and the, say, at the end of the day, know, it will be at the discretion at of the, the court. Yeah, of the discretion of the court. Whether to give bail or not. Or yes. not. But very quickly, because we have to end this segment now, do you think this would deter, you know, serve as a deterrent now? It's already serving as a it's, it's already There is fear already. There is tension. I mean, for a judge to be, you know, slamming, past governors with this kind of sentence. There is tension already. It is, it, everybody is now careful as to what to do, when and how. Because this is what we actually need. We need heavy tension coming from the judiciary so that you will know that once you go wrong, a day is going to come when your case will be determined. And then you will go in to serve prison time. And I also want to call on the uh, uh, judges of the uh, higher courts, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, to do the needful, to do justice. Because law is what regulates humans. So law is the highest reasoning embedded by nature, which permits what should be done and forbids the contrary. So we must, these judges at the higher level, they must take these cases and look at it dispassionately and then give justice to where you're just like the Temis we have, the, the scale of justice, her eyes are closed and there's a sword. He does not know who is going to call, whether it's his brother or his sister or a governor or a senator or whatever. He puts the knife where justice should be, and that is what should happen at the higher courts. And, and, and I want to, very quickly, to, very to quickly. defy a little bit. That it may uh, not serve as a deterrent. Yes. Maybe, yes. He, maybe. You know why? Because one would have expected, with what happened to Iburi in London, one would have expected that. That happened that, in London, not yeah, that's in That's what Nigeria. I'm saying. That one would have expected, because in speaking with a former commissioner, you know, in that state. You know, one would have expected that, oh, look, this would deter his colleagues who were governors. But rather, what, did, did, what that did was for them to begin to find sharper ways of stealing. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know? I was just going to say that, and that and they will so, begin to cover their yeah, acts. Exactly. Yeah, so what they will be better. doing now, that's why, like Evans is saying, we need more. You know, not just this one-off. We need more of these judges dispensing justice this way. And so once you do that, it will begin to deter a lot of people who are going into public office. And not just not to begin to see public office as opportunity to grab, because someday we come okay. when, you know, the justice, the windmill of justice that was grinding slowly will be grinding faster Fast, and will know nobody. <laughs> okay. We'll just wait and see. I, I know uh, as we speak today, there would be about uh, 22 governors, 22 former governors who, 22 or 20 <coughs> former governors who are standing trial. That's taking out the case of Darie and uh, Reverend Jolly Nyama. So we see how those cases go. Well, um, gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for coming on the program and thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. And uh, we, we just wait and see what happens, especially to those uh, other cases. We'll take a short break now and when we come back, we'll still be talking legal matters. Stay with us. On Deji360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the Constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The Constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. 
people are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, Wait. Digi360, providing clarity to issues.